So let's proceed with the last sub chapter in chapter 3, which is 3.5 application of integration in circuit analysis. So I believe that previously you have learned how to get the current of the capacitor by using this formula. And as for the inductor, okay, you will get the voltage of inductor by using this formula. Okay, this is from the previous chapter, chapter 2. Okay, application of differentiation in circuit analysis. Now, you are in chapter 3, it means that you are doing the reverse process of differentiation, which is by uh, applying integration. That means in this uh, application of integration in circuit analysis, this time around, you are not looking for current of the capacitor, but instead, you are looking for the voltage of the capacitor. Okay, so for the voltage of the capacitor, we are still uh, using this formula except that this time around we are applying the integration so we integrate both sides okay so when you integrate the i dt you are actually looking for the v of the capacitor and the dv over dt here is where you apply the integration process so c C in this formula is the capacitance, which is measured in Farad, F. Okay, so it's a constant. So that's why, okay, that is why what happened here is that you need to rearrange before you can get this. Okay, how to do this? Okay, let me show you how to do, to obtain this form. Okay, once we initially have this formula i equals to c dv over dt now since we apply the integration to both sides it means that we would like to have the dv over dt here okay because this is the only part that you can do the integration process so you need to rearrange this one how so C dv over dt, so we want to integrate this one, is equals to integrate of i dt, okay? So C is a constant, so we can bring the C into the uh, right side here. So it becomes 1 over C integration of i dt. And the integration of dv over dt here, okay, integration of dv over dt here, if you integrate it, you will get the v, okay. Now, if you, um, if you, if you're not aware yet, so capacitor, okay, capacitor has the memory properties, okay. That is why the capacitor has been used uh, as a power bank. Okay, you have, you must have your own power bank, right? So capacitor is usually used as a power bank because it has the memory capacity. Okay, memory properties. So how does it has the memory properties? Is because it has the initial value which is the V0. So if you notice your power bank, if you want to use it, it must have the it must have the initial voltage so that uh, so that when you plug in your power bank to your phone along the time the voltage of your power bank will be reduced because it has been consumed by your handphone. Okay, so the initial voltage here, okay, 
mass is obtained or you get it once you if you try to solve this you must have okay you must have the this is i okay if we plug in the the upper and lower limit here okay plus v naught so basically v naught is the c constant okay not c capacitor but c constant so your final formula will be this one okay v equals to 1 over c okay v equals to 1 over c integration of i from the initial time here to t plus v naught which is the initial voltage value of the capacitor okay now as for the inductor so again we have this formula okay we have this formula v equals to l the idt so the only component that we can integrate is the di over dt okay again we would like to find okay for the integration in circuit analysis for inductor we would like to have the final value of i we want to find i okay so to do this again you need to rearrange this original formula first we integrate both sides okay let me write it down for you so we integrate v dt equals to integration of this is from uh, 0 to t l di over dt and since we would like to have the di over dt so we rearrange it back so l di over dt so l is a constant you can take it out and this is v dt so the l here you can bring it to the right side so what we have when you integrate di over dt you'll get i and this will become 1 over L integration of V dt plus I naught. So I naught is again a C constant. Okay. And it has initial value. Okay. Initial current value. Alright. So your final... Um, your final formula when you want to find the current of the inductor is this one okay now let's have a look into an example okay